Well, continuing on from our water pump video where we where we fitted a Sparex um, water pump onto our TUD20, um, the Sparex pump was a S43576 water pump. Um, while you got the front off here, there's a couple of troublesome points on the Fergies that um, that we can look at while we're here. Now, while you're here, there's a hose kit that we sell at queenslandtractorspares.com.au and if you put up in the search HK1 we can sell you a, a little hose kit for your Ferguson T20 and it has the three hoses that you need so we'll just take the hoses off out of the way and discard them for the moment the surplus to requirement now this here is where the thermostat Oh, this is the thermostat housing. The thermostat sits in here. This is what's left of where the temperature gauge come out. There was a, a thread that a 5.8 spanner goes on. And I thought, oh, I'll just give that a little bump and see how it comes out. And it broke off. But it wasn't leaking, so anyway, we'll have a look. We'll have a look and see what we have. <coughs> now, no need to pull this fella off. I'll probably undo it and put a new split pin in the radiator support. Um, in the top radiator support, so but from here I'd like to pull this top thermostat housing off now it's a tight fit in there with your spanners but you need a half inch spanner half AF and it's going to be a nuisance so we'll see if we can get these screws off here. Now these can be a problem as well because these screws here they're the front fuel tank mount they've got a bit of rubber under them and look this one's loose anyway but you have a steel bolt going into an aluminium casting. Now these aluminium castings they're not real flash um, yeah you certainly could get a better one um, but then again yeah they're probably 60 years old so so we'll try and um, undo these bolts, loosen these off. Um, even if we're not going to pull the thermostat housing off, we'll loosen them off and never seize them. There's a little 13mm spanner here that might... Oh yeah, that's coming. And that has had the flat worn off it for some reason. I wonder what's going on there. That's why my half inch spanner wouldn't fit on there. It's got one side ground off the bolt. And it's got two spring washers on it. <laughs> I'd say a ring in. I'll see if I can get our put the socket down through to the back one. coming along. I wasn't using the spanner the right way. There'll be messages now. So I'll just undo this thermostat housing. That's what we have. Look at that. That's broken. So we'll be buying a new one of those. They're not expensive, these parts. It should have a thermostat in here, which it hasn't got. So we'll put a thermostat in as well. So that opens these bolts up at the back here better for us. So And 
Remember what I said about the ones that get tight and don't want to come undone? <laughs> well, I think we might have one. A little bit of possum pee around all that. <clears throat> now I had a... <laughs> I got a laugh. I had a, someone ask me if they don't have possums can they use some um, bandicoot or badger or something and look, yes, you can. Whatever pee you can buy in a bottle is good. Okay, we won't undo video, un sorry, I won't video undoing these. You've seen a bloke undo a bolt before. Now, this governor housing here, that's your throd, your, the rod from your throttle. So, to get the thermoset housing off, we actually have to undo that. Which then forces us to set it up properly. That's not a bad thing either. So we'll undo a few bolts, I'll undo this clamp off and we'll come back shortly. Well, once again, <laughs> this bolt in here, it had a 12 millimeter head on it. This other one round here is half inch. I've got the two out the top here and I've loosened off the U clamp here on the governor. So that should come. That should slowly slide off the end here for us. then allow us to get off this spring so a bit of possum pee This one's got two holes there. I'll have a look. I can't remember. I thought they only had one hole. Anyway, we'll take that off. <coughs> I mean, the governor housing sits like that. So this curve here comes under the shaft there. When it needs to go back on, it can go up on the tank. Now yeah, we'll finish undoing this screw here. So this has, <laughs> I don't know whoever's been in here, they've got bloody bolts from everywhere and put in it. I believe that's the right bolt for the tank with the point on it, I can remember that, but they've actually got a nut off something, there's a spacer under there, so. So I don't know why, but when it goes back we'll try and fix these things, because it's just a muck around factor, but we'll, we'll get it as good as we can for this sort of thing. It's got silicon on here too, which I absolutely hate that stuff. Don't use it. Straight in the water pot. I have a heap of um, insulation for the heat shield too, but... There. Bit more possum pee. If in doubt, possum pee it. And look at this. This is the problem with the silicon. That's inside the gasket in the cooling system. And yeah, little bits of that, they go and block your radiator up and they just don't help anything at all. Try and keep that from going in there now. As far as these go, this probably isn't a bad one. You can see the bulb in there, that's the bulb from the temperature gauge. It sits under the thermostat so it actually takes a reading of the water under the thermostat and then 
um, once the thermostat gets to 82 degrees it opens and it continues the flow of water through so look all in all that's not a bad one but we're going to put a new one on if we're going to do the top housing we might as well do the bottom one too so okay that's pulling the thermostat housing off well I've sanded this rod down and cleaned the gasket off the main surface area here now we we're going to need to put a gasket down here and the gasket seals up the the hole from them both so in this instance we'll just use a little of our black goo our Loctite Aviation cement so just to run around run around there run around again no silicon <laughs> you get sick of hearing me say that sir and on this rod here where it comes through we're going to put a little bit of never seize and so where the, where the throttle rod comes through the aluminium housing we should be okay now I had one of these in stock at home here in Bundy Bear's shed so we'll sit that down there sit the tank down now the bolts if you remember that we undone here they're all different shapes and sizes so I've gone and got some new ones and they're 5 16th UNF oh sorry UNC they're the coarse thread 5 16th by 3 quarters of an inch long and the spanner should fit the head nicely <laughs> and I, look I, I put out never sees on a lot of things so um, that looks like a nice fit up there now half inch spanner You might just zoom in a bit so you can see a little bit better. If you've ever tried to video yourself working, <laughs> it's a bit of a job. You think you're doing okay and you're trying to look at the viewfinder and next thing you're out of shot. We put new spring washers on here too. All new hardware. I find you can't get the get the half inch ringy in. You have to use the open ender, which is not such a problem. Now these bolts up here for the tank, we need to put the rubber in. That sits like that. And I've got new washers for that, new bolts for that too. Now, the bolts I took out of UNF and the bolts in the Sparex um, thermostat housing are UNC. Now I had a look at another one I had in at the shop there, a Bearco brand one, and it was UNC too. So um, I'm just not 100% sure what thread it should have. But look, I'll go and get a couple of flat washers. Um, I've only got the springies here at the moment. I'll go and get a couple of flat washers 
um, put a bit of never seize on, get that piece started up and we'll go from there. Well a week's gone by since we um, put this on because I had to order parts. I had to order a new top housing because this one was broken and here we go. We have a, a gasket, a Spar XS 6629 and now this is the thermostat I've chosen to put in. Now the thermostat goes down this way like that so this wax plug there that heats up and when the wax expands that actually opens the thermostat up. Now the, the thermostats I like to use have a little hole in them. Now see this little bubble here? I like that. Now what's that bubble do? It lets the air out. So when you're filling your radiator up and your radiator is not full yet, it lets all the air out so you don't get a hot or a, a hot air pocket in your engine. And then when the water is full, that pops up and closes up and lets your thermostat do the work. So what do we need to do here? We need to get some of that black goo again. The aviation cement. I'll just put a little run around there. Try not to spill it everywhere. I will have to get a new bottle. <laughs> I spread it everywhere, but anyway. Way too much gloomy glue used in this video. Just because I've got an old tin I'm trying to use up and it's a rattly old brush. I might put a bit of bit of goo on the gasket just just down here. But yeah. No need to use anywhere near as much glue as I'm using here. And then this is our new housing. New housing sits on there. Now I'll just go and grab a couple of new bolts. So I'll be back in a minute. Now the bolts I'm choosing to use are three quarter UNC with a spring washer and they're three quarters of an inch long. And that doesn't want to start. There we go. And the one up the back there. Alright, I'll do these up and I'll come back. Right, now we've got this bolted on and what I forgot to do when I was first putting the bolts on was put never seize on, but they do have never seize on them now. I clean up this gasket goo seems I put too much on. Now this next step, you don't have to do it, it's just I'm a bit of a fussy bugger. And you'll see around some of these housings the gaskets stick out a little bit so I like to run a blade round and get those little bits of broken gasket off and then later on when and if you paint your tractor you don't have little bits of gasket hanging out you have a nice defined line for the paint to sit on now the the one down the bottom here, it's the same. So just run a blade around. And if you've got that gasket nice and neat with the edge of the housing, well it doesn't end up an old frayed bit of gasket and plus the job looks nicer. Depends why you're restoring it. If you're restoring tractors like I do and I take them to shows and sit around talking about tractors all day. Um, yeah, I, I like to do this but if you don't want it, well that's fine too. And to get some of this aviation cement off I'll probably just put a little bit of petrol on a rag 
gasoline for you in America. <laughs> now the old thermostat housing had the um, radiator support on it too, so we'll have to put that on. But look, I've had a thought, and um, <laughs> that's two this year now. And what I'm going to do while we're doing this tractor. I've only got to pop these bolts out, two on the back, and we can do the tappets. So from here, we're going to do the tappets, and this governor housing, there's a whole setup in doing this. And we're going to try and run through, get a couple of new pins and run through setting the governor up. So for this video, that will do. And um, yeah, follow along next time when we, I don't know which one we're going to do first. I don't know whether we'll do the tappets or the governor, but. Anyway, we'll do one or the other. Catch you later, eh?